I am a little behind the times, and I'm not just talking about my fashion sense. Hey, I like some retro, but we're not going there. I used to actually have a retro clothing store, but you didn't know that. Okay, moving along. The reason we're going a little bit back to the future, or future to the back, may not work as well. It's because I didn't give a second take. I didn't give maybe another, some more feedback on the All Blacks v Namibia. So this is my makeup. This is my, well, I forgot your birthday, but I got you something from the dairy on the way home. Maybe? Okay, hopefully it's a little bit more enticing than a bag of lollies. But hey. If it's your birthday, at least you can open something. And that's nice to open something. Speaking of birthdays, someone in this video, birthday is coming up. I don't want to say who. I don't want to give any indication. But let's just leave it there. Maybe I'll mention more in another video. Anyway, moving on. The All Blacks in Namibia. The, what I want to focus on for a couple of moments. Okay, maybe more than a couple of moments. I want to focus on two players. Two players who I had in my original 23. I put down 23 names before this international season began in 2023 and thought, I'd like to see this group given the opportunity to develop. I think this group can do something special. Cam Roygaard was my replacement halfback, so he was 21. And Lester Whanganuku was number 13. Yes, I decided I wanted a big, creative man big creative beast a big creative rugby player in my midfield one who not only got involved but makes things happen provides so much for those around him not only on attack but also defense and so i'll talk a little bit about these two individuals and i hopefully i'm hoping that when the team for italy is named that Cam Roygaard is on the bench, and that Leicester Whanganuku probably is not going to be named in 13. I don't think that's an option. And even, it's probably tough for him even to be in the starting. It seems like on the bench is going to be where Leicester Whanganuku may be. However, it's going to be still, in saying that, as I weigh up my own remarks, it's hard to leave him out of the starting 15 when you see what he did. And so we'll start with him. I watched him closely. I think it might have been the second time. Maybe maybe, maybe even the... Th I don't know if I did it the third time. But post the initial offering. And he was so involved. And if you don't take account, you don't really grasp how much. And on both sides of the ball. Let me just give a little bit of an indication. So from the kickoff, he was one of the first down after the All Blacks kicked off. And then Namibia cleared about the 14 second mark. Give or take a second or two. And he was one of the first back. And so you can see that's an indication of attitude, indication of intent. And then when the ball made his way out to him, was a, I think it was a wide skip-out pass. I think from McKenzie. And he was able to like fend off his defender, who was on him quite quickly, and then make about eight more metres. Uh, I think either going through or evading to other defenders so eight more meters and then not much further on there was a kick pass to him out wide he was able to take he was able to ride a defender able to stay on his feet and and offload to david heavily who came around sort of his outside of his touchline side david heavily got tackled lester fonglicka was first there he played halfback but it was a pick and go he went through this their blindside flanker stayed on his feet in the number 10's tackle and offloaded to Cam Roygaard. Roygaard scored. Oh, man, he's involved. He was so involved early. Then from the kickoff, he received the ball, beat one defender, offloaded out the side. Fortunately, David Heavily kicked it out in the full. But then Namibia had the ball, and he had two turnovers. Well, what would have been two turnovers? One, he had the ball, but they were able to get the ball back, and he appealed to the referee. And another one... An all-black player didn't roll away, so even though he was fine, the referee said he was fine, he didn't get the benefit. We saw further on, a try he scored, a solo try, the hard line, basically. The route one, and 
We get an indication there of how involved he is, both sides, on attack and defence. And that, I think he had like 16 carries. I think that's the number, thereabouts. So, well involved. And you think, we've got to see more of Leicester Whanganuku. How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Personally, if he's not at 13, I've got Will Jordan at fullback and Talia and Whanganuku on the wings. See, originally I had Will Jordan at fullback, Talia on one wing, and Narawa on the other wing, and Leicester Whanganuku in the midfield. Excuse me. And I had Riki Iwano on the bench. Because I want I want that much talent, that much intent, that much danger that the opposition go, who do we stop and cover? So it's going to be difficult, though, to get lo to get Leicester Whanganuku, because I think Will Jordan and Mark Talia are pretty assured. And the All Black Fraternity Coaching Trust, Fozzie, seems intent on Bowden at 15. What he provides, yes, this kicking game is probably more developed, but Will Jordan has, has a pretty solid kick. He can kick a pretty good distance, and in the air as well. Maybe the dinky die kicks not as much, but... You're going to get a different emphasis. You're going to get someone who is going to look for the gap, who's going to say, right, <clears throat> maybe one or two times, we're not just going to play kick tennis, which is happening in a lot of matches. So you've got a double whammy there with Will Jordan at fullback at, with, if Leicester Whanganuku goes on the wing. A lot of that happening. Well, hopefully they're open to it, and then maybe we'll see it against Italy. And then... It will be compelling enough that we'll see it further on. But that's all a hypothetical at this stage. So that's Leicester Whanganuku. Stood out. Didn't get man of the match. Cam Roygaard, the next man, got man of the match. But he was right up there as you analyse and look at it. Cam Roygaard, potentially we saw more of him. The one word I think of with Roygaard, poise. I know you maybe hear a tapping in the background. I think it's something. Whether or not what's happening around here, something's going on. Anyway, I'll keep nattering and then we'll let you go. Cam Roygaard poise. The small moments I've seen him in 2023, the small opportunities have all been uh, occasions that he has grasped with both hands. He doesn't seem like a guy who gets flustered. He doesn't seem like someone who gets overawed. He doesn't have either a fight or flight type mentality. I mean, he's not darting. Maybe you want to say it's fight, not flight. He's engaged. He's intentional. And you you feel... <laughs> yeah, how to, print, how to describe this. Not at peace and not at rest. That sounds a bit interesting for a rugby context. But it's so, like that type of... There's a comfort level when he has the ball in his hands. You sense that about him, and so you're not anxious because he's not anxious. And it's almost like, I've said, he's the closest we had to DuPont. He provides that point of difference with Aaron Smith. That's one of the reasons why he's always been on the bench for me, because my third halfback was Brad Weber, not Finlay Christie. But you you sense that when he has the ball in his hand, he's not panicking, he's not thinking, ah, oh, I'm just going to get it out. You know, it's not... Things are slowing down. What do they say about class? That things slow down for them. So a, a real big upside so far for Cam Roygaard. And people are not only going to see other commentary online. So he has to be in the 23. And he provides a point of difference so that if things get tight and we need something to happen, then and we, we want to change up, then he can provide that. Size... Running ability, we saw against Namibia that one dart before half time and then inside cut to Damien McKenzie was was delightful. And for, again, it's the small moments. It's not the fact that he made the break. It's not the fact that he even put the cut on with McKenzie on the inside. It's how he did it. If you look back, it's actually quite late and he turned his body a lot more which allows Damien McKenzie to take, take such a direct angle and not lose a step, seemingly, from my memory anyway. And he was able to actually actually make that break because it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't like 
inside cut, no one's around him. There was defenders who were trying to, who weren't far from him, but that pass just allowed him, it gave him the 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 runway to to make it over the try line. So Cam Roygaard has to be in the 23. Maybe both of them will be on the bench. And that's okay because you need a strong bench and the All Blacks need to keep building and keep developing their bench. David McKenzie could be there as well as another on the bench. Uh, so the, the three, interestingly, two, two backs, and I'm just using another one. The three backs could be Roygaard, McKenzie, and Whanganuku. Hmm. It is interesting. And because if you th if you think if you were to put say say hypothetically you were to put like Will Jordan at fullback and Fong and look into the starting lineup, you probably wouldn't have Bowden Barrett and D Mac, D Mac McKenzie on the bench. Both of them are too similar. So that may be even a way they're thinking. Is that where you go? Would or do you want someone who maybe is more 12, 13 like ALB Anton Leonard Brown? Anyway, those are subsequent thoughts. So as I looked again at at Namibia. Uh, Roy Gard and Lester Whanganuku. Both involved, both executed, both showed a great upside for the All Blacks and will be involved, should be involved, both should be involved. I think uh, Whanganuku was on the bench versus France, according to my notes anyway, and uh, started versus Namibia, so he's going to be there, seemingly. But Roy Gard should be as well. Finlay Christie's had... Enough opportunities. Yes, he's a bit of a scrapper. He's good defensively. Talkers around, you know, around the rucks, and 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 uh, can can offer something. But for mine, he hasn't nailed it, and he's had a number of opportunities. So it's time for Roy Gard. What say you on both of those players? What would you do? Where would you play Fanganuku, Leicester Fanganuku, and Roy Gard, Cam Roy Gard? I am Johnny King.